This is Joshua again with Calculus 1, proving the limit using epsilon and delta. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to write the definition. Okay, now don't worry about that. So we write if 0 is less than absolute value of x minus c, whose c here, c is the value which approaches x, so in this case 1, it's less than delta, then absolute value of f of x, again, f of x is the function, so x cubed minus 2x minus l is the value, so in this case, negative 1. It's got to be less than epsilon. So for this problem, we're going to use a bit of pre-calculus, okay? So here we start with, like we always start in the previous videos, we always start with the conclusion to find the delta. Okay, so absolute value of x cubed minus 2x plus 1 is less than epsilon. Okay, so now this is always going to, in a situation like this um, proof, whenever you're going to prove a limit, okay, this polynomial that you get is going to factorize from the x minus c. Therefore, I'm going to use synthetic division to find the factorization. So, negative, uh, well, positive 1, because I want to factor x minus 1. I'm going to write all the coefficients of x cubed minus 2x plus 1. So, in this case, it's going to be 1, 0 for x squared, negative 2 for x, and 1 for 1. Okay? And 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And when you add that, you get 0. Okay? So this is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1 times x squared plus x minus 1. Okay? Now, when I equal this, I'm equaling the left side. I'm not equaling the right side. This is still less than epsilon. Now comes the part where I need to find a bound for x squared plus x minus 1. Okay. Now, in order to do that, we choose a delta. So you have to be careful with the delta that you choose because you don't want 0 in your inequality. So for example, if I choose delta, if delta is 1, okay? Then you have absolute value of x minus 1 less than 1. That implies that negative 1 is less than x minus 1 less than 1. That implies that if I add negative 1 on all three inequalities, negative 1 plus 1, x, because negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and 1 plus 1. Notice that in one of the sides of the inequality, you get zero, okay? And that's always problematic because you can't divide by zero. And we want to be able to manipulate this bound so we could divide by the inequalities, okay? So let's use a different delta. Choose delta instead to be one half, okay? Make it a smaller delta. That means that absolute value of x minus one is less than one half. And then we do proceed with the same thing. We get negative one half less than x minus one less than one half. Okay, we add one on both sides less than x less than one half plus one. Okay, in this side you have negative one half, and then in this side you have three halves. Now which one do I want to choose? Well, I want something that is greater than x squared plus x minus 1 so that I can divide it by epsilon in the end. Okay, so I want this absolute value, this to be greater or equal to some number. So which one am I going to choose? I'm going to use the 3 halves. So I'm going to transform this, this, into an absolute value again. But in order to do that, I need negative 3 halves. 
but we know that negative one half is greater than negative three halves. Therefore, this means that absolute value of x is less than three halves, okay? Now that we know that, we can use the triangle inequality for this polynomial, okay? So absolute value of x squared plus x minus one is less than or equal by the triangle inequality to absolute value of x squared plus absolute value of x plus absolute value of negative one, which is equal to the absolute value of x squared by properties of absolute value plus absolute value of x plus one, okay? Now we use this fact here, right? So this is gonna be less than, absolute value of x is less than three halves, so this is gonna be less than three halves squared plus three halves plus one. Okay, then we simplify this, this is gonna be nine fourths plus three halves plus one. This becomes nine fourths plus six fourths plus four over four. This becomes six plus four is 10 plus nine is 19 over four. Okay, that means that we can bound this thing by 19 over four. Therefore, absolute value of x minus one times absolute value of x squared plus x minus one, it's gonna be less than absolute value of x minus one times 19 over four, okay? And that we want it less than epsilon. Therefore, that implies that absolute value of x minus one is gonna be less than well, we divide by 19 over four, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of 19 over four, which is four over 19 epsilon, okay? Therefore, if we choose, we choose delta to be the minimum value between one half and four epsilon over 19, then we'll have the restriction we need to solve the problem. And that will be all for the proof. If you like the video, please subscribe to Multival or visit our website at www.multival.com. Thanks.